we have these two trees on the agenda. The one on the right here is a big ash. Got the emerald ash borer coming to town, so that's definitely going to be dying. And this is a gum here with a big bit of decay at the base. Today I'm going to use these trees as an opportunity to experiment with an intentional barber chair. We know the ash is very prone to barber chair, so those wood fibers will split fairly easily. The gum is not, so it'll be interesting to see how each one reacts. Because barber chair has such a bad reputation for killing so many loggers, uh, no one has ever really thought, to my knowledge, to use it intentionally. But if you study the properties of the barber chair, there are some things that could be used, it could be used for. It's very dangerous, of course, for the faller to stand at the base of the tree or be anywhere near the base of the tree as it barber chairs. This is what kills the loggers. But in this situation, we're going to use high pull lines and a skid loader, big ropes, and actually break these tops out. The good news is that there's nothing that we can do wrong here with such a wide open area. Barber chair, as many people already know, is considered an extreme hazard in logging and uh, less so in the tree, bit, uh, tree world, but it definitely can kill you either way. Uh, basically, when a tree splits during the falling process vertically along the trunk, the front comes down as the back lifts up and then it will fall off so that out back and down, the whole back of the tree can come down and hit you. If, or if you're right behind it, it'll as it lifts, the back lifts, it can actually knock you and then fall on you. So it's been known to kill many loggers. As such, we normally avoid barber chairs. We're always taught to avoid barber chairs. There's a number of techniques to do that. In this situation, I'm actually going to use barber chair to my advantage. Number one, part of this is a learning process. We're going to videotape and see what we can learn from this. But number two, we want to drop these two trees in the street today without damaging the blacktop or poking holes in the blacktop. And by having the trees come off at a higher point, hinging above us, uh, there's going to be a tendency then for the way the branches land to, to spread the force out over the tips rather than having a, a potential branch break and then poke through the blacktop. The way the branch structure on the gums are, the branches are growing on a slight upward arc. Very unlikely that that would happen. We're just going to do this as an experiment anyhow with the gum to see how that works. Gum is a lot, uh, has a lot more structural stability. The grain is much stronger than the ash, so this one's going to be a little harder to split. And then when it drops, we have these logs below me here set up in front of the curb to protect the curb. Now you would never do this with the driveway, but we can get away with it with the street. The street is much stronger, has a lot more blacktop, is a lot thicker than a driveway would be. So the only real concern here would be that if the trunk splits and the tree doesn't roll off but stays high on the stump, that could be a real danger issue. Fortunately, we have the skid loader here which could pull or push that tree right off the stump, so that's not going to be an issue. I want these trees to come off high off the stump, so I'm going to make the back cut about shoulder high. I'm going to make the back cut about two-thirds of the way through, maybe a little bit more. We're going to see what it takes to split the trunk. The other thing is, normally, because the, the cut's high, not down at the stump, the tree would not barber chair, but it would just rip the trunk downward and just pull straight off. We wrap the trunk of the tree a number of times with some half-inch, just some old cordage. Uh, probably 10 times wrapped up so there's no chance it's going to split down the trunk it's going to have to split up and cause the barber chair here it may barber chair just a couple of feet it may barber chair 15 feet either way there's really nothing that can be damaged here so we're going to see what happens this is a classic example of an unintentional bypass dutchman in the face causing barber chair and let's take a look at how dangerous that could be that piece lifted up about 20 feet and then just slammed down to the ground so why did I say that this is a barber chair caused by an unintentional bypass in the face? Watch here, he's going to stop for a second and look up at the tree. So he stops and looks up. Now why did he do that? Let's replay that in slow motion. He's in the back cut and we got this plane at half speed. If you look not at the forward but look at the top of the tree, you'll see the top of the tree starts to move right there and then he stands back and he looks up at it. He's expecting the tree to start to go. Let's watch that over three more times again. And you can see that tree's moving. All right, here it is again. Tree's starting to move and he stands up. And one more time, as he finishing the cut, watch that tree start to move. Just in case you didn't catch that, look at these still photos. The back and forth movement at the top of that tree. 
It's very, very slight, and it's actually the slight bit of movement that is the clear indicator to show that this tree was cut with an unintentional bypass Dutchman in the face. The bypass Dutchman is caused by an improper face cut. The top cut and the bottom cut do not meet perfectly in an apex there. That little kerf acts as a mini notch so that when the tree begins to move, that kerf will close. And when the kerf closes, the tree will stop. It's that little bit of movement and then it just stops. At this point, the tree now has just a slight bit more forward lean than it had before. And oftentimes, that's just enough force to cause the tree to split vertically along the trunk and cause the barber chair. Certain species of trees are much more prone to barber chair than others, as well as trees that have defects in the trunk where they're going to be prone to splitting. And whenever you see a log that looks like this, you know that there's been a bypass in the face. You can see that little flat spot that's been cut through just in front of the hinge fibers on this log. What causes barber chair is when the forward force on the tree is stronger than the structural integrity of the tree holding that trunk together so it doesn't really split vertically before the hinge is fully formed. So if the hinge is too wide or too thick, too strong, the a forward pulling force on the tree will tend to want to split it vertically on the trunk. This occurs in forward leaning trees naturally, so they have to be cut in a special way to prevent barber chair. It can also occur from uh, a poorly formed notch where the by there's a bypass in the two cuts, and it can occur, occur when there's a, a pulling force is too strong on the tree. This barber chair is caused because the hinge is actually stronger than the vertical grain of the trunk. So that when the face closes, the forward force in the tree causes the trunk to split rather than the hinge to fail. Today we're actually going to induce the barber chair once the back cut's been made, no notch, so just a back cut about two thirds of the way through the trunk. Then I'm gonna step away. There's no chance of anybody being hurt uh, which makes it a, a great scenario to, to experiment with the barber chair today. Fairly gentle landing in the street here. You can see all those limbs were pretty much upward growing, nothing down to poke into the blacktop. The uh, sassafras log here by the curb definitely kept the trunk up off the curb, so protecting the curb. And then, well, we learned something, but through failure here, I did not get the tree to barber chair. This trunk tried to split out, obviously, right along these grains here, and uh, the those ropes definitely held it from ripping right out, but there was quite a bit of a defect and a decay in the trunk of the tree here. So it was more prone to rip out downward than upward. I needed to make this back up quite a bit deeper. That doesn't look like it's a lot more than halfway through. Maybe I was a little hesitant there, but uh, I should have taken it quite a, bit, quite a bit deeper if I wanted it to barber chair. So we'll keep that in mind on the ash tree. The, the effect worked, it just didn't work the way I expected it to. Hopefully we get a better result on the ash and again I would fault the back cut for only being about halfway or slightly more than halfway through the tree. It needed to be two thirds or even more than two thirds of the way through the tree on the gum. <laughs>
Another observation on this fall was that the tree did not fall perpendicular to the back cut. The tree was weighted left, it was leaning a little left, and it fell a little left. Now that may strictly be because the weight was leaning left, or it may be because the way the grain of the tree took it left, or maybe a combination of the two. One thing for sure is that you're not going to be able to fall a tree accurately with this method. So you can see the angle of the branches came down nicely so no holes got poked in the blacktop. And uh, just the one concern that I had was that this thing would stand up and stay on the trunk. But we'll limb it all up and yank it off of there or cut it off of there or push it off of there one way or the other. I can get the machine actually to protect me and just finish that cut and let him push it over to the side. The other thing that you get out of this is you shorten up the fall a little bit. Not leaving the ground and that fall got shortened up by at least 10 or 15 feet. Woo! Yeah baby, that's a work of art. So we brought in a skid load to see if we could push this tree off the stump once we had limbed up a portion of the top. He gave it a few pushes down low where he, the tree definitely couldn't hurt him. And we budged it, but it definitely wasn't going to come off the stump without another relief cut. So once he was in position holding the trunk in place, I went in there and made a quick relief cut most of the way through. Asked him to give it another push, and over she went. Obviously, Barber Chair isn't going to make it into the book as an accepted technique anytime soon. I was looking for an opportunity to try to use Barber Chair because I saw some properties that could actually be used to the fallers' advantage, and I wanted to show that here. I think it's a bit of a unique video. I hope you enjoyed watching, though I certainly wouldn't recommend trying this at home. All right, you can take a look at this blacktop. No appreciable damage at all. A couple little scratches, but that's mostly just bark. Nothing serious at all here. Looking beautiful.